Hello, everyone. It's Kate Stillman with the Yoga Healer Podcast, and I have a great pleasure to introduce you to Fabian Farquharson. Oh, I said it wrong. Right? Yeah. I did. Fuck her. And he's in UK now. He's on his way to Portugal. And this guy, I've I've seen his videos on different urine therapy groups. And what I so where the community's at in this urine therapy series or the Shivambu series is like people they get they get a bit about like the what and the why and the how. And and where I thought Fabian we could really start is like you're you're really into from what I can tell into the alchemical transformations that happen on the spiritual level and the psycho-spiritual level, but then also having a deep understanding of the chemistry and the alkalinity and the ion level of what, like, why does urine therapy work? And that's really where I want to start the conversation of like, from your lived experience, but also from the experiments that you're running, um, why does it work? That is a really, really good question. It's a really good place to start. Uh, because with what I'm looking at at the moment, which is it's an un- an ongoing um, sort of research, so 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 to speak, if you want to call it that, is is, is that amino acids and people have heard me doing this with, with some videos, and it's been going on for quite a long while actually now because the it's the the amount that is within uh, the urine. So um, amino acids is the 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 building block of life. So what we what you'll find is what we'll find. Is, is, is that we, the, the, your, your, the bodily functions, yeah, they, they cannot be sustained and they cannot survive without amino acids, right? So, for example, yeah. as soon as, as, soon as you, we have an, an issue with something called L-arginine um, uh, and we, we're not able, the endothelial cells are not able to produce nitric oxide, what happens is then the arteries, our arteries, then start to, so I'm, I'm going to start putting slides up and stuff like that. So what I'm, what yeah. I'm speaking about is like, like this, hopefully that will come up, right? Yeah, you'll have yeah. To bear, everyone that's listening, you'll have, you'll have to bear with us, right? So one of the, the main factors is, 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 is that this one, for example, the flow of blood. Now, everything that I, that I say, <laughs> is all, everything is all, is all interconnected. So then on a metaphysical, on a metaphysical level, we cannot really get anywhere unless we learn to let go and we, we start to gain what I call a flow. Yeah. Right. Now that's that same flow, that same flow has to take place on a physical level within the within what we call the body as well. So we have a plasma highway that runs throughout our whole of our system, but we also have the the um, the, the blood, the, the cardiovascular system the blood flow system that runs through the arteries, which runs through something called the lumen. And the word lumen, because I do a lot of etymology and stuff as well, the word lumen, lu means light. So there is what we call blood is a flow of light, which is traveling through our blood highways, but it, 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 it's also contained separately in the plasma membrane within the plasma highway as well. So there's, there's, there's a two-way system happening here. So. Your initial question, so what actually happens is when any amino acids are running low, such as L-arginine and something called citrulline, citrulline, these two work hand in hand to produce nitric oxide. Yeah. As nitric, as nitric oxide diminishes, then plaque starts to build up within these arteries. As that starts to take place, the flow of blood starts to decrease. And this is why people have heart disease. We have this heart disease thing. So some things like heart disease um, and so on and so forth and cardiovascular and metabolic illnesses, these are, these are connected to um, erectile dysfunction, which is massive. So we know that when we were in the sort of in the 90s and um, coming out, you had this thing with Viagra. Remember people started saying, ah, oh, there's mm-hmm. this thing for uh, uh, Viagra. People need to start using it. And one of the and one of the things is is this this science has been heavily heavily suppressed. It's massively suppressed, right? Um, and what, one of the things that they said was is that you didn't need things like arginine and things like taurine as well. I used to start with I started with this mm. with, um, with the taurines, right? Mm-hmm. And what, what actually happens is the the, the the science, the mainstream, the materialist science, right? which doesn't contain any spirit, um, 
didn't take into account and deliberately nullified the fact that we have to gain sources of arginine and citrulline. These are L-arginine and L-citrulline. So remember I said the word lumen. Lumen yep. is within this, the artery is called a lumen. And the L-arginine and the L-citrulline, they are L's, they are L's because they're L amino acids. So L uh, is, means is the letter beginning for light, but L also symbolizes the, 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 the three forces that come together to, to, to manifest physical life and also to manifest metaphysical life. And so what I'm speaking about is the actual energy field that, is, that surrounds any form of organic matter, right? And it is a threefold system. It's a there's a three way, a three there's a, there's, there's, there's three energies that are actually um, involved in that, right? One of those energies is a negative energy, is a negative force, right? And that negative that negative force is uh, within the urine, right? So the urine has this negative charge, right? But we won't go too far because there's that much I can go into. So the, the nitric oxide, this nitric oxide here, so if I just take that back off, this, off, off the screen, you can see, before I take it off the screen, you can see as nitric oxide diminishes with this slide that I'm using, as it diminishes, then we have this increase in the plaque. And that is the increase in pretty much all of the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the bodily functions. It starts to diminish and start to decrease as this nitric oxide um, starts to decrease. And that nitric oxide, that nitric oxide is coming from the uh, L-arginine and, and it is also coming from the citrulline as well. Citrine. Yeah. Got it. Right. Now, that, now, yeah. The, yeah. Go on. So is the negative charge, is that negative ions? Right. Is yes, that, it's connected yeah. to a negative, a negative ion charge. Now, those forces that I was speaking about that, that govern our our reality, yeah. that is above, it is still negative, but it's a negative uh, magnetism. But the negative charge is that I'm speaking about, we're speaking about here, is mm -hmm. born from that force. Yeah. It is born from that, from, from that force. So even when we have lightning, it's down to, these, there's a negative and positive ch uh, interchange. Yeah takes place which which actually causes that yeah so yep. the negative charge is a negative voltage yeah it's yep. a millivolt voltage charge right mm -hmm. so that what that what that and that's is, what causes movement i mean just to kind of break it down like right that's because there's a charge there's movement just like lightning coming down to earth it has to go from a to b what causes it go to A from A to B? There's a there's a magnetism and there's a there's a, a movement of energy from one place to the other, and that's what we're talking about in terms of voltage, just the energy that's causing that that movement. Yeah. And in that movement, things happen. Electrical, yeah, it's electrical. electrical. Yeah, you know, in Ayurveda, right. they say that vata and prana. So prana is a part of vata, and vata is that which carries that. It's it's so you take energy and you break it into three parts, and you have you have, I mean, in one way you could say you have catabolism, metabolism, and anabolism. Uh, but in another way, you can say that like vata is the, it's just the energy that moves things. Pitta met metabolic is the energy that heats and changes things. And kapha is the energy that coheses things. And so you have one universal energy going into a tri, it, you know, it, it trifurcates, right? And then in that, the vata energy that you're explaining, that charge energy, that in Ayurveda is vata. Like yeah, that's the yeah. force of movement and it's yeah. exactly what you're saying. It's electrical and it's voltage. Yeah. So that's exactly. So you're always going to find that, that three-way system. It's same as even in the Rosh with, with, with the word, you always have the word and then the, the sound, but then you need the, the breath. You need the breath in order to create that, that three. So that, that manifests and brings life to what we call the actual word. Cause we bring it into physicality by that same three-way system, right? And then we then we can even go with the rest of the. What the point I make is with the urine, mm -hmm. is is that it's it's interconnected, it's interconnected with 
everything that we want to be doing in terms of our growth physically and mm-hmm. spiritually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's well, what it is, it's actually this essence of the soul, which resides within the blood. Right. Yeah. So I was reading this guy who um, he the guy in Canada who he's at the University of Alberta and he runs the urine metabolome project. And he uh, so they've identified what over 4000 proteins in in urine and and, um, and and other and other factors or compounds. Uh, And he was saying like when interviewed and he's not into urine therapy at all, but he was saying when interviewed, he's like, it's like a fingerprint you can identify someone by their urine and it doesn't that that chemical composition that like unique fingerprint of the individual and how we're all different the unique snowflake self like they can they're identifying that at the university of alberta and canada in terms of a metabolome project where they're trying to find like what are all the different things that are in urine what are all the different end products that end up in urine and what they're finding is that in investing in they've, they've the, I think they have the largest database in the world on this um, and they help other people connect with that information in that database. So if anyone's looking for information on that, it's phenomenal. Uh, and they have all the chemical structures of all the, all the, all the four, you know, I think they're up to like 4,700 factors in urine. Uh, and he's saying it's like your unique fingerprint. Like you can identify a, a person by their urine. And so exactly what you're saying on that spiritual and that unique vibratory self, and how yeah. that gets upcycled, how that gets reintegrated and strengthened. Um, it's yeah. cool to see that we're, we're seeing that from, you know, just straight up chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's because, so then this, the spirit is connected to the science. So the real, the real science would be a transcendental, a transcendentalist science, which would be connected to uh, true um, transcendental spirituality. And which would then incorporate um, alchemy, the al- the alchemical side within that, and then on top of that, then we can have the, the metaphysical on top of that as well, because the, the we because you're aligning the the phosphate, which is a phosphorus, which is which is a light, and you can yeah. actually create light. You can actually create light using urine or or um, salt salt waters. You can actually create uh, light with that because I actually capture plasma plasma fields and one of the things we use using that is an nac nna nac1 salt in that to as a, as, as a process so you can actually generate light um with with urine as well because it's yeah anode and cathodes so forth it, 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 it's it's that it's a force so in 1660 in 1666 um uh, i think the, the, the gentleman's name was Bernard, I can't remember his surname now, but we'll, we'll go into it. Right, that gentleman there in uh, 1666, he was the first uh, person to find uh, through alchemy, through heating um, urine, that it contains a, a white light. Now, the white light of now, which is phosphorus, and phosphorus is a white light. So urine its energy within it also contains a lot of um phosphorus right so within the with it's containing a, a lot of phosphorus so what I, what we do now is this well let me just go back a minute I hope i don't lose you a yeah. second because what i'm trying to do is trying to go back to that that slide so yeah they, there you are so within within the urine within the urine it contains a lot of phosphates so there's something called a parathyroid hormone which is in your throat and that parathyroid hormone that parathyroid hormone it releases calcium phosphates which is within the bones it releases them when there's not enough right then what it does it it then sends them down to the kidneys and it actually triggers vitamin d so when there's too much this is what happens when there's too much phosphates so then those phosphates then get excreted within your urine when you when you retake those when you re, when you then retake retake those back in you are then increasing your internal energy supply yeah when you then breathe when you then breathe 
deep breathe, which is why I encourage deep breathing with the urine. Mm -hmm. When you deep breathe, what actually happens, what actually happens is, 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 is that you then trigger uh, adenotriphosphate, phosphate, which is ATP. ATP, yeah. Yeah, you then, you then trigger that, you then trigger that with the, the deep breathing. Yeah, but what you have done because of the clear. oxygen, right? Just to be yeah. clear, because there's, yeah. because of the, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what you're oxygenating. Yeah. yeah but you're oxygenating taken, what you're putting back in. So the calcium phosphate, yeah. go ahead. But you've, taken, but you've taken in phosphates at the same time as well, because you've just yep. released those through your parathyroid yep. hormone. Right. So then what happens is you've then in, in taken, you've been taking those phosphates, but then what happens, you got vas vasodilation, then your yeah. blood vessel, then this, what happens is, then the oxygen is able to increase. Then the nitric oxide pathway becomes open through the endothelial cells because of the arginine that is also within the urine. Yeah. Yep. So what I'm trying to show you here, what I'm saying is here is what the urine is, there's something called energy, well, something that I call energy compounding, right? Okay, yeah. Energy compounding, I, I, I use something called the wisdom mirror, which is, they, which is a high, a high level of wisdom that resides within this place that resides above the word, right? And it takes a lot of um, what I call gnosis in order to get to recognize and to work with that wisdom mirror. So what it's showing you is, is that when you excrete that urine, when you then take the urine out, as I was saying earlier about these three forces, when you take that out, out of the body, it now becomes a living material matter entity as an electrical being with the millivolts, with, with a millivolt charge, right? It has a pH level of around seven, right? At, at that point there where you take it out, it then starts to generate its own field of magnetism, magnetic field. It then at that point starts to compound its own energy and it starts to increase its, um, its, its energy field starts to expand. As it's okay, stop, wait, pause. So the... <laughs> I just want to, I want to help the listener. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is this, is the electrical energy is, is uh, alive and well in the body. The urine leaves the body. And now that electrical energy, it's, that increases, but now you also have an increase of magnetic, of magnetism. Right. So the, what actually happens is, so you're an electrical being, Right. But yep. it, what, you, what you can't, on a metaphysical level. Wait, and a, anyone who's forgotten that, like stick your finger in a socket, right? Like yeah. an electrical yeah. socket. You'll remember that, that quickly. That's so it. Like, so yeah. the, ele the, ele the electricity that comes is just the effect. It's an yeah. effect. So when you, when you come out, you were born, that was an effect. That effect was your physical, your physicality, which dropped down, dropped down into electricity. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get back to the cause, which is a dielectricity, a magneto dielectric force. We're trying to get back to the cause. So our senses and everything else are defined uh, via magnetism. But our bodily actions, they the bodily actions that we have, all the movement and everything, that comes from electricity. But above that, that generates the actual the reason that we're stood here is due to the actual uh, is it's due to the actual magnetism itself so the magnetism is the mysterious background and the, the things that we can't explain easily mm -hmm. are due to magnetism that's what we that's what we can't explain so somebody can't really explain to you i'll just take this slide off a minute and i'll go back to that somebody can't really explain to you on a simple level why people ask the question why does the urine uh, increase in strength now i've done a lot of experimentation on yeah. this right so why does it increase in its strength why does it increase in its negative charge once it is left to store and the reason that that is is because every every organic oh it, i just lost it has yeah, good can you hear me there yeah yep we're it, good yeah right it has a magnetic field yeah everything yep. does but you yep. cannot see that. You cannot see that because it resides outside of visible light. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the but the magnetic field, the magnetic field, um, when we take the urine out, it then starts to oscillate. It starts to to, to, to spin, right? And it starts to expand. Mm -hmm. And because it's because it starts to expand, yeah, because it starts to expand, 
what actually happens is the strength of the urine starts to increase. And it's, we know that this magnetism has expanded because its pH is risen. Yeah. Our yeah. energy. Field. So when we flow, when we let the blood flow, when we let the blood flow and we let, and we create a flow within our field starts to expand. When we yep. do the opposite, when we do the opposite and we, we're not able to get the arginines, we're not able to get the, um, the nitric oxides, we're not able to get the l citrullines which is what I'm going to put up in a minute. When we're not able to get, when we're, when we're deficient in these and taurine as well, taurine's massive. When we're deficient in these, then we start to create a contraction. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Our pH starts to fall and the cell, mm. have the, have the pH of our blood stays the same, but the pH of the cells starts to diminish and come down. Right. As that, yeah, as that happens, we become exposed to things such as heart disease, diabetes, the cancers, and all of these things. Right. If we're able to keep these, the arginines, the taurines, the l citrullines if we're able to keep these things up and running, yeah. What actually happens is, what, what happens is, is, is that, uh, we, there is no reason for the body to bre begin to break down. So yep. when we put the when we put the um, when we put the negative, negative charge on top of that, we are now entering the air, reversing the aging. I'm just trying to get the, we're we're in the area of reversing our aging. Yep. Right. Yep. Because what that does, what the negative charge does, is it goes to the DNA and buffers it and cleans it like a buffering system. Ah, uh, see? Yep. Right, so that slide that I just had on, if I just pull that back up a minute, right? Mm -hmm. Now, people can see here now, like we can squash all the arguments and all the things about uh, urine mm -hmm. through, through this um, knowledge, because this list here is a list of all the amino acids that are within the urine. Right. Yep. So if you go to lysine, well, halfway down, you can see there's something called lysine. Yeah. What, ly what lysine does is it, it, um, it diminishes viruses and things like that. Right. So if we go to there, you can see arginine at the top. Yeah. And you can see, and you can see citrulline there as well. Yep. Yeah. And there's another one called um, L ornifying. Which play which that plays a massive role within the bodily function bodily functions, and you can see taurine. So taurine, if when the heart is low on taurine, so when somebody drinks, when, so taurine's drink, almost what it that's showing. It's almost the same in plasma as it is in urine on the taurine. Yeah. So, but the word taurine, the word urine, mm -hmm. yeah, taurine. Because mm. urine, can if you look at that taurine, if I take away the ta, you'll see that it says urine. Yep. See. Yep. Yep. Now, 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 taurine, it, it it plays a role in keeping the heart activated, keeping the heart moving. It also plays a role with calcium in creating new blood blood cell, um, new blood cells, brain cells at the same time as well within the brain at the same time. So, the urine needs to be taken in through the nose uh, and into the brain. So, when we, so what I'm saying is, so when we age that urine when we age that urine what happens is the the negative charge goes up on it so it's a it's ability it's ability to reverse your aging actually uh, increases and it's the brain suffers with oxidative stress massively the arginine triggers off glutathione it triggers off something called an nrf2 pathway so what the what the arginine does the the arginine actually the other actually deals with many body bodily processes that are designed to clean the blood, which is what negative charge is. What we're doing here is we're cleaning the blood and opening the blood the, the blood vessels to allow the blood to, to flow. Mm -hmm. and, and erection is what you would associate with a youngster. So sexual drive is what we associate. So I'm basically yeah. saying here, yeah. all thinking 
is 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 based on our inability to understand spirit science, uh, um, our chemical science, spirit science, and based upon how our understanding from a materialist perspective and the way biology works on the body. Yeah. So really, what 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 it is? Amino acids are the building block of life. If you have, if you can sustain the amino acids, so I'm going to bring, try and bring up one more slide. If you can mm -hmm. sustain the amino acid, yeah, these amino acids, then there is no reason for there's no reason for the body to break down in any way. So L-citrulline, you can see here, is used uh, for Alzheimer's Alzheimer's disease, dementia, fatigue, uh, muscle weakness, sickle cell disease, erect see it says erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure. And diabetes right now these now where now where you're going to find these where you're going to find these i use a different slide on my last presentation actually and i've got another one coming up another presentation coming up on um this this lost tussle that i'm doing where it's i'm, I'm equating this to this practice this practice is a tantric practice it should be used within uh uh within within tantra um yeah at the same time as well so let me just go back to to that's that what i was looking for so we can see it's, I think this is the urea cycle on here. There we go. I don't think about that one there. Right. So you see, you see here that, so you see where it says urea, it's involved in the urea cycle anyway. In the urea cycle, when amino acids break broken down, they get broken down from, um, from um, amino acids. Am ammonia gets broken down from amino acids. So then you have um, urea. So arginine, arginine and, cit and citrulline they, they themselves, they themselves are a, are a byproduct, are a byproduct of, of um, urea. So what they, what they're telling you, what they're telling you is, is, is that the, is that they're telling you that um, your, urea is a, is a waste product, but at the same time, at the same time, what they're saying to you, what they're saying to you is, is that L-arginine and citrulline, both of these, both of these, are a byproduct of the urea cycle. So what I'm, what I'm, so what, I'm, what we're going to break down here now is, is that you are supposed to be drinking your urine. You are supposed to be drinking it. You're supposed to be drinking it because it's. They will tell you in their materialist science that L-citrulline and arginine, yeah, both of those are excreted as what they are telling, what they are saying is as a waste product. Yeah. When, yeah. when, when, I, when, when we can show you clearly here that all of them, all of them are actually involved in the upliftment and the, the, not just the advancement of the human being, human avatar, but they are also involved in this, this, the, this, this, the stability of your physical vessel. But yet they will tell you that they are there to be um, excreted as waste so like i've just shown on that slide yeah involved in the urea that urea um cycle. so can you tell so there's this uh well and i just want to say to that it's like for people listening that don't do it it doesn't make any sense when you do do it it's like yeah that's the that's the experience like that is the experience. And, and that's what I keep finding in like writing the book is it, it's it, to some degree, it's not worth looking at reduction of science uh, from non-users when trying to understand what this is because the lived experience and yoga in Ayurveda have always come from the avatar, from the human lived experience of yeah. what we're talking about, not from an analytical outside in very limited reductionist explanation. Uh, what yeah. I want you to do is break down what happens as urine ages and the most, like how things change. Because to me, so when I first started studying Ayurveda, uh, that it was an alchemical science was like, that's what the tantrics were all about with, with Ayurveda, like with the alchemy of like the fountain of youth and um, like, what are, how are that, how is the body as alchemy and, and ecosystem as alchemy? Like, what is, what is the deep level of interconnectivity here? And that was, you know, that was a large, large part of what drove Ayurveda. Uh, and when you, 
look at it through the lens of urine therapy to understand the alchemy of urine. It gets very, I think it gets very, very mind blowing because it, I mean, to, to someone who's totally new to urine, right? I mean, new in the way of like it, other than flushing it down the toilet, you're new to it. Yeah. You start to notice if you start, if you start to get into urine therapy, one of the first impulses that people have is to collect it. And yes. to me, it's very deep biological. It's an instinctual, like once you have a relationship with your urine at all, it's like putting it on your skin, putting it on your tongue, putting it on your feet, putting it in your eyes, like whatever you're trying to uplift in your system, you start to use it very quickly. What is recovered in the, I would say in our ancestral wisdom is collect it. And now yeah. as soon as you collect it, the alchemical game is on. And it happens fast, right? Like what changes in the urine happens fast and what you're talking about in terms of the charges and the, and the changes in the chemical composition uh, and the alkalinity. What, tell, can you give us a little bit of like what is happening? Because I'm pretty confused about, I mean, well, let me just share this. So from my Ayurvedic experience and, and, and from my, um, my now lived experience with this, where I have this intellectual knowledge from Ayurveda for 20 some years, and then I have a couple months of heavy use of urine. What you described and what happens with the aged urine and the breathing practices, I go mountain biking a lot. I live at altitude, I bike hard and I have an aged urine pack in my bike pack. So I drink the aged urine and it's not very old. It's only like a few days old. So this still feels like it's pretty high in ammonia and I can feel it opening my sinuses up, right? And you can feel the change. I've noticed like, yeah, like my heart, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of that, that yeah. electrical energy. Yeah. 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 And let me just say one more thing. Uh, uh, I'm like the energizer bunny. Like I, my thermogenesis has shifted. So like, I don't, if it's really, really hot out, it's been really hot. The West is drying out and becoming a desert. Uh, I don't overheat. And I have it. Yeah. And at the end of the ride, at the end of the mountain bike ride, I could do it again. Like there's a very, very little fatigue. So everything that you're explaining, I'm like, yep, that's happening. Yep. Check all those boxes. And I've done a lot. I've done a lot of other types of things that have very positive effects on the body, like cold plunging and intermittent fasting and whatnot. But there's a, there's another level uh, that happens with what you're talking about with aging urine and deep breathing. So what is happening as, so the urine comes out of the body, what are some of the alchemical, what are some of the chemical changes that it goes through just sort of step-by-step. Step. I know you've already said a lot of it. I just want like the, the right. urine aging, alchemical changes for dummies. Yeah. So, I mean, you, what, what, what you're talking about there. So is once, once that urine, it, it comes out, it goes through what you call this oxidation process as well. Right. So okay. it starts to, it starts to oxidize. And what you, what you sometimes find is the longer that, that urine sometimes in it ages, you'll get, it's just a bit, a bit darker on the top and stuff like that. Yeah. And then that's mm -hmm. going to be, like, that can be, that, 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 that can be um, stronger as well. What happens is, is, is that there's different types of aged urine as well. Based upon what you are consuming, this is what I'm saying about the wisdom mirror as well. And it's because yeah. it's, it's a direct, direct connection to, with your soul essence. It, it knows, it knows. Yeah. So you can smell your urine and know when your urine is ready because it's connected with your subconscious mind, which is connected yeah. to a universal mind, connected to a universal mind. So your, your, your actual urine, when you take it out, it goes through this, this oxidation process. But what actually happens is it starts to move towards, because your body's made out of gases, right? So mm -hmm. the urine also is gases as well. So as it starts to what you oxidize, which you, we, we call ferment, Right, like I've mentioned. Yep. Uh, at the very bottom of it, at the very bottom of it, you start to see like uh, white stuff forming, which is mm -hmm. as it starts to crystallize itself, it starts to become crystallized. It then gathers its own, its own, each urine has its own different energy signature based upon, partly based upon what you were previously consuming. Mm -hmm. No different to a high yep. tech avatar is a high tech kit. Right. So no different. So whatever you were consuming, what you should consume, re ideally, really, if you want to work with aged urine is um, fruits, 
is the fruit. It picks up its own energy signature, yeah, due to the, like I say, as it comes out and the, with the oxidation process, and then it's then, and then what happens is it then starts to become stronger, but it's not, it's not, it's intelligent. It's intelligent. So we, mm -hmm. it starts to gain a more, more, more of a structure, starts to, to gain more of a structure, but the magnetism, mm -hmm. the magnetism starts to increase the electrical force that is actually within that urine. And okay. as, the longer, as you leave that, as you leave that urine, it then starts to become much stronger. And then once it comes to the pH nines, pH nines, we know that it is ready because you sit in the mother's womb for nine months mm. and you sit inside of an am, amniotic fluid. And I'm saying, and I'm, what I'm teaching here, what I'm saying here is, is that aminos AM, which is alpha male, because what isn't, you can't be much of an alpha male in, in the world, in the materialist world, with the erectile dysfunction. So alpha male is AM, which is morning, which is the rising of the sun. So it is a phosphorus, which is like a text to Venus, which is again, it's coming from the, the, the actual kidneys, right? So the kidneys will excrete ammonia to create balance, they will, they will do that. But the ammonia that's in the urine is, the, is a different type of ammonia to what you find in outside. This mm -hmm. ammonia is an organic ammonia, is the difference. Mm. Same, okay. with same with the nitric oxide, when it's external, if you start breathing it, it could cause you problems. But the nitric oxide that gets generated within mm -hmm. is a token. The nitric oxide that gets generated within is, is different. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's an organic substance. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an organic um, ammonia. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's very different. So, I mean, I've got like um, a, a, few slides on, a few slides on here. So, for example, this one here with uh, nitric oxide. So it says, and while female anatomy is different, the, the sexual arousal and entanglement is also dependent upon nitric oxide, causing vasodilation for greater blood flow, leading to a more, a more satisfying experience. So you are having sex with yourself through your daily interactions anyway. So what, what I'm saying is, what nitric oxide is, it's like a force. Mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm running on it now. I'm running on that and I'm running on lots of other things as well. I'm running on at the moment, I'm running on, on hydrogen, which has got, like, it's, that's like a 600 negative electric charge. What these things are doing are is separating the blood. It's cleaning the blood, cleaning, cleaning the blood, and it's separating the blood cells. So, you see, this is all working on levels, and that's what we're saying about energy compounding. You're compounding energy when you take that urine out. It automatically starts recognising that that's... If we go back, you know, 10,000 years more, then... The urine was still here because people were still here. It's only our level of intelligence and our level of knowing that is restricted and limited based upon the last five, six, seven thousand years. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say that I'd say a lot. I'd say anyone who's gotten to like the heavy user category of urine therapy has an innate knowing of that. Like humans have known this. You humans yeah. have known this. We forgot it, but we've done yeah. this. So deeply. if you look at that at that one here, at this one here. This is what this is saying is, it is that you can actually, if you understand how, we understand if we were in the area of uh, right, right hand path tantra, tantric, tantric mm -hmm. so you can use this sexual force. The urine is a sexual force. Yeah. So you can mm -hmm. use that, this, um, the urine to increase that sexual force and to flip it up the other way using negative magnetism by when one doesn't ejaculate and when one doesn't even ex excrete. So then you can use it even because you're creating a stillness because everything is a paradox. So this, so the, some people have said to me in the past, so is this only based around uh, men? So now you can see here, no, it's based due to the, the vasodilation, it's both uh, masculine and feminine. You're increasing your sexual force. What is that doing? It's yeah. increasing your sexual drive. What is that doing? It's in connection with, reversing your aging yeah i mean it's 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 turning it yeah it's turning on the creative power you know fabian this is absolutely fabulous and i have i have to go i think we need to schedule part two and i want to point everyone to your youtube channel so fabian the way you find out the way you learn from fabian the master is transmutation 2020 on youtube can we schedule part two let's do that okay mm -hmm.
because we have to we have so much more to talk about we have we got to yeah. go into the whole tantric side we have to go into the whole what's happening on the psycho spiritual side what's happening on the enlightenment side and in the grounded enlightenment and i want to share some things that we've seen and i've seen in my community you know working with ayurveda with people for years and i'm seeing breakthroughs happening yeah. much much faster um as mm -hmm. we're adding to the daily yoga routines as we're adding urine therapy and i'm just seeing like really hard to crack cases with trauma and with yeah. You know, whether it was like early high childhood trauma, accidents, injuries, this stuff are people that have a lot of, um, you know, and Ayurveda, like very, very high Vata, like really yeah. hard time living in the real world today, just having ma major, major breakthroughs. Uh, so yeah. I want to unpack why that's happening, et cetera. This has been amazing. Part one. Likewise. You're amazing. Let's keep, let's keep, um, yeah, we'll get, we'll schedule part two coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. We'll see you on the next one. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Brilliant. Peace and love. Peace and, and love to you. And sensitiveness. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.